Hey guys, it's me, Nikki. Um, let's get into it. We're going to talk about part two of our curriculum of our, a little bit of our extras. Um, I did our core curriculum and that will be, um, linked up above here if you guys want to check that out. But this is everything we're doing outside of our core. Um, I am leaving out history from this video. That will be a whole other separate video because I am so excited to share with you stuff on that. But if you're interested in watching part two, keep on watching. All right, let's get into it. So we are in a co-op right now. In our co-op right now, I'm calling it a co-op. It's one other family as of now um, that we are doing science and art. We're incorporating both together and we're meeting once a week and doing all the science and art. <laughs> but I have found something that I want to incorporate from home that is not a part of the co-op. And I did have a video on the science that we are using for our co-op. I can link that up here. We are using Generation Genius um, for science experiments and together learning. Um, I have not really done that on our own as just a me and her thing. Um, we are truly using that for our co-op. But I have found something that she can incorporate daily for science. For science, daily science, we are going to be using our Evan Moore grade two daily science. Um, I ultimately chose this because it just seems like something she would really enjoy doing. So let's talk about the science. I'm trying to come to the beginning here. So there are what they call big ideas. Living things and their cycles is in big idea one. Plants and animals look a lot like their parents in two. Big idea three is earth contains rock, water, and air. Four is the sun and the moon and the stars and their patterns. And five is sounds are made with objects, can travel through solids, liquids, and gases. Um, big idea six are magnets, some things that move without touching them. So it looks like there are six big ideas and there is an answer key, which is amazing. Um, I am hoping that she'll be able to get through this on her own independently um, as something maybe once a week. Um, it does say daily science, but I am a really big advocate for doing what works for your family. A book can say week one, but maybe the lesson plus the activities in week one um, are fairly simple. So maybe she can get it all done in one sitting like she used to do with um, one of her other geography books. It really is just going to depend and I'm going to take and see how she does. But I do want her to remember the vocabulary and I'm hoping that we really focus on the vocab and maybe even add the vocabulary from this to our core curriculum vocabulary books um, like Wordly Wise and what other book are we using? can't think of it right now. Um, so we'll see. I don't, I'm not sure how we're going to incorporate this yet, but I'm really excited about it because I think she's going to be really excited about this because she's always asking me for science. Always, always, always. Evan Moore. Next, we are getting, this is not sponsored by any means, but I am just a big fan of, you guessed it, Evan Moore. <laughs> um, this is geography grade two. I picked this for one reason only. There is color, my friends. Color pages. Amen. Can we get an amen? <laughs> color. I am so excited for just the color itself. It sold me on the color. Um, another independent thing that she may be able to knock out, you know, a couple pages each you know, whenever she dabbles into this, but I'm going to let her kind of go. So this kind of talks about weather, 
the human system, places and regions, environment and society, the use of geography, um, the world in spatial terms, places and regions, a roadmap, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm going to let her pretty much choose when she wants to incorporate her geography book. Probably a once a week kind of thing. Um, and then she can do as little or as much as she wants in that time. As long as the book gets finished by the end of the year, I'm good with that. So this is our geography. Next up is I've been seeing a lot of this go around. This is how to teach children art. And we are not art people. I have posted art videos before. We are not art people. She is very crafty, very um, creative. But when it comes to like art, I am not. And so I almost need this book more than she does. <laughs> but this is cool. So it is a very colorful book. The pages are very glossy. 100 projects with step by step directions. Yes, step by step directions. Those are my favorites. Um, so let me show you what we have here. Um, it's great, it has a material list, words to know. There's a part one and a part two. Painting supplies, craft supplies, the definition. This is learning about lines, step by step on lines. So you're teaching the seven elements of art. Diagonal, vertical, curves. I'm excited to dabble in this. Again, this is probably gonna be like a once a week thing or when we're in the mood thing. Um, rainy day thing or pretty much anytime she wants to do art I'm down I have so many art books this is just the one I'm incorporating this year but I have lots of art books on my shelf so just some fun projects guys okay art Evan Moore so this is grades one through six, by the way. This is not just for second grade. Um, I'm excited. Let me show you our social studies. Options that I have not decided which one I wanna do, if any. Um, I'm leaning more towards, I wanna say the hardcore. Um, I don't remember why, but I think it's because it gave me book suggestions. Um, to go along with this book. I can't say for sure. Yes, it does. Read more. It has more book suggestions throughout the book, which I find is great. We go to the library all the time. We could totally read more and dive deeper into some of these topics. Um, I'm excited. It, it's a lot about main ideas and vocabularies and facts and all this stuff. But we are dabbling in. I don't know that I need this. Honestly, I don't. Um, it is old. It is, let's see, when was the book? It's printed in the USA, copyrighted in the 2012 edition. So this is old. I mean, we're talking, I think Obama's in the book, um, which is fine. I'm, I'm okay with an older book. Um, social studies, probably this one, maybe this one. Um, when we start our year, I will tune in. So, okay, so the other thing that I really loved about this one is that it has biographies incorporated in this book. And I think in the teacher's edition, they actually have books as well that's like that can go along with this book too. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check. 
we are not going to be testing on any of this. It's just going to be kind of a means of extra information. Um, so next thing we are going to be doing is journaling. Um, I am planning to do a whole video talking about journaling, but I just got these primary um, composition notebooks for grades K through two. So they basically are just lined notebooks um, and I'm going to journal with her. So I planned, I bought a HP sprocket that prints pictures. Um, no ink is involved. I don't know. It's some kind of sorcery. Um, and they print stickers. So I plan to do some journaling. Um, talk about our days. If we have some pictures we want to print out and think about how we want to incorporate that into our journal. I'm all for it. For fun, morning basket kind of acti activity. Um, we are going to stick with our draw right now. We have um, the polar bear one. So this has exciting um, things in this book. Draw a reindeer. These things I like to use for more fun, I don't like to incorporate them as school because I really want her to be able to enjoy it and not feel pressured or forced into doing all of this because this is a lot, you know? Um, so this is something else that is new and I don't know if I like it after I bought it, but we're going to try it out. Um, this is the typing one program, um, through the good and the beautiful. It was kind of an impulse buy, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm not quite positively sure I love this. I skimmed through it. Um, it talks about, you know, items needed. Child should complete one or two or more lessons a day, two to five days a week. Lessons take five to 15 minutes, depending on the speed of the child. Um, a lesson is completed when all the cloud check boxes are ch checked off. Um, I mean, it talks about the parts of a keyboard. And then tells you how to complete a lesson. It has a Mac keyboard as well. So different types of keyboard, which is convenient. Um, it talks about posture and hand position, which is super important, honestly. So it says before you start, so lesson one is it tells you to place your hands on and off the home position four times. Feel the ridges on F and J and make sure you're using correct posture and hand position. Type the letters below, include spaces. Always bring your fingers back to home row position. Press enter or return with your right pinky to start each new line and it shows where their hands should be, even on this side as well. And then what letter or word like letters to type. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. Um, it also, has, it also has stickers. The stickers are, I think are incorporated into something. Um, and then these are the clouds to check off once you've done the task or assignment. I don't, this isn't a large book by no means. So it really only has 80 lessons. Um, and it tells you where to put the stickers. Again, I don't know. I know there are free curriculums for typing out there if you're interested in adding something like that on. This can be a maybe a once every couple weeks kind of thing. I, again, I don't want to overload her with things in her day or week. So when she's interested in doing that, then we can set aside time for that. Um, we do get the Knowledge Crate box seasonally that we will also add in here and there um, when that comes in for our Fun Fridays as we do do Fun Fridays. <laughs> um, that's it, I believe, I think, 
I think I showed you everything. Um, so one thing I'm leaving out is history. So history is going to be a whole separate video. Um, and I will give you a very in-depth to our history and our plans for that. I'm waiting on one more thing to come in the mail for that that are going to have some read aloud choices as well. So yeah, that's our extras. Um, it may look and seem like a lot. I promise you this should only be like a dark two hour day. Um, and I plan to split that up with our core stuff in the morning and then dabble into some of our extra stuff or whatever we have going on with that, whether it's a unit study or whatever, um, in the afternoon and leave lots of time for downtime and playtime and meet up with friends time, field trips, etc. Um, that is it. I am so excited for second grade. We will be starting that in July. Um, so it is now April and we are basically, when I'm filming this, this is April. You're not going to see this video until May. Um, but we are going to be on break and I have lots of fun at unit studies. I did do a spring thing up here and yeah, we're going to take it easy and just, we're going to be learning. We're just not doing our core stuff until July. So that's it. I hope that this helps give you an idea or something to add into your homeschool or to take out. I mean, it's all good if you take it out too. Um, I may take some of this stuff out as well. It really just depends on how it starts to flow, how we like it, how she likes it. And I might add stuff. You just never know. You just never know. So that is it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe, the bell, all that jazz. Let me know in the comments what your extras are adding on into your homeschool. Are you guys book works? Do you guys not even do any of the extras? Let me know. I'm very curious on your thoughts. Bye, guys.